We talked about the Makata. We talked about the joy. We talked about none of you had a real intuition of what piece of yeah. magic and beauty was being created. We do live in a profession, inhabit a profession that has those performers who mm. then go out to give a great performance yeah. with a great curtain call and take the stage. How, how does this contradiction work together? I mean, sorry, I throw it out there. I'm not sure where we're going with this, but still, I think we know, know the performers who... Yeah. But you know, you've, you've interviewed how many people? Like, you know, you've sat down with other, other actors and, and, you, and you're surprised what you find sometimes. And the people who are the reverse of you, who absolutely want every bit of attention in that room on them. And that's the reverse of what you do. But that's not a strength, is it? No, but it's part of the performing animal. Um, not in you, but in certainly some performers. I've worked with them, and you just say, okay, I'll sit over here and let it burn. Fine, okay. And if they mm -hmm. look my direction, I'll, I'll give them the line back. But you can't penetrate it. You can't speak to it. It's burning and... But that, that therein lies the problem, I think. I think you and I both have experienced, I'm sure every actor in, who's been in this business has experienced that. And I always believe that that was a true impression. What I'm finding out about in my life is that that true impression is not necessarily so. Right. You know, like you, you mentioned an actor, I won't mention his name right. right now, earlier, and he said he's incredibly shy. I would never in a million years have thought that. But maybe his protection and his awareness we man I, I manufactured confidence. He manufactures confidence and maybe arrogance for a reason. Right. Because it's disarming. Because not a lot of us have real confidence. I want to talk about one other kind of performer, and I will name him because I'm a huge admirer of him, Brent, Brent Carver. Oh, I love the man. Love him. And to see what you think about this, Brent, for me, burns part of himself every time he performs mm -hmm. a show. He has an incandescent thing that not only is very... You can't take your eyes off him, but it seems to me watching, he's self-immolating in some way a piece of himself. Yeah. Is that what he's doing? Yeah. None of us know we're on the outside, but oh, you yeah. see Brent as well. Uh, yeah, and I think, that's, I, I think that's a remarkable description of, I think, what he does. There, there are particles, big chunks of him are getting burned all the time. Interesting choice of words, too, because there's, there's that in his life. Because I see that a lot in the sing singer world. Mm -hmm. I see some singers who are technical, and I see some singers, well, there's been the famous ones, the Edith Piafs, who burn, right? Yeah. And they literally burn their lives out early. Yeah. I think that's part of Brent's connective tissue to the art. I think that's where he lives as an artist. And that's why it's, it, his, his work is incandescent. You know, it's... It's just beautiful, exquisite. If he can find that emotional journey into the character, then he's in an area that right. he knows. So that's where he will go. Right. You know, he's multi-talented in that, but his, he comes from the heart, he comes from pain. And those are universal feelings that exist in all of us. So his connection to that connective tissue in him connects to us. And it's brilliant. And because of two performers talking about other performers, I also yeah. want to talk a little about, it, about Heath Lambert's. Oh, yes. As Brent incandescence his soul, Heath Lambert's, bless his soul, now dead, yeah. burned also in his chasing of the farcical and the comic with a way that I, I could never do and was told in awe of, and he made me fall on the floor laughing all oh, the yeah. time. But something was burning and self-destructing inside Heath. Absolutely except in a comedic for form. Well, yet some of his most poignant work was non-comedic. I never saw it. His Cyrano. His Cyrano, right. Yeah. yeah. His Cyrano was breathtaking. Breathtaking. I had a chance to work with Heath in the last couple of years down in Pittsburgh, because that's where he went. And we did um, Oscar Wilde's, was it Oscar Wilde? Yes, Oscar Wilde. Um, the play about Oscar Wilde, based on his trial. What was the name of it? I can't remember. And um, Heath was wonderful, but he was, and we used to share a car. The theater provided a car, and we both shared it. And I guess they gave it to the Canadians. So <laughs> it was good. <laughs> and we had this place out in the country, and he stayed in a different place. And, and we'd talk all the time. And I'd never known Heath until that time. 
But he was like always trying to pay back a sin that he felt he'd created. He felt that, you know, he'd burned a lot of bridges. Was with that people? Fire with the world? With people? Both. With people in particular, like, you know, that he was a Buddhist at that point. He was trying to find peace. He's always been trying to find peace because the flame was so great with him and so intense that people didn't want to work with him because it became Heath's show because he was just, he was so brilliant at it. And he said, I, he didn't mean to be that way. He didn't mean, mm -hmm. his, the product of his being a performer wasn't meant to hurt other people, other performers, or to put them in a shadow. It's just, he tapped into something that just became almost deliriously overwhelming. Would you say it was a demon? I'm not saying it's a oh, demon, yeah. but some would say, well, he, he, the <coughs> performer is a Sorry. demon, has a demon inside them, and the demon is exercising his way out. Yeah. And he wanted to purge that. He wanted to make up for it. He wanted to be forgiven for it. That's the impression I got. Because at heart, he was a very gentle soul mm -hmm. and a very wonderful man, very self-effacing. And he could say things to me comically about the world. Yeah. No, well, you come a little close to it, but he, I mean, he's told me comic things about life through his elbow or his prop oh, yes. or his tone that not only made me laugh, they were re revelations. Yes. And, you know, and that's, I go, I owe, I owe to that performer.